so here I'll continue the diagnostic testing aspect of the little MATLAB practice. I'll continue with the airfare example. We've previously done white tests and tests for autocorrelation and estimated an OLS regression using the OLS hack function. So what I want to do next is I want to do a, a test for structural breaks. Now the, what I want to con consider is whether the relationship between our airfares and distance and number of passengers, whether that differs between flights that involve New York and all other flights. So we'll have two groups, or we split our observations into two groups. One group where neither origin nor destination is New York, and another group where either, of the, where either the origin or the destination is New York. So what we need is this dummy variable. So you can, let me just quickly look at the spreadsheet here. So you can see for all these first observations, uh, there is in New York either the origin or the destination. For all these observations, we want zeros, and that zero is somewhere we can we can find New York here, for instance. Okay, so for observations 317 to 320, so flights from Atlanta to New York. So these belong to the group, to the New York group. So how do we do that in MATLAB? The information in MATLAB, of course, is in the text variable. Okay, we looked at that previously before. These are the just the two text columns that were imported from the spreadsheet. And a very useful function here is the strcmp, or short for string compare function. Now you can see here from test, the, uh, these are not numbers, okay? There's a, a cell variable behind there, a non-numerical data. So what we want to do is the following. We take the first two columns of our text variable, which basically everything there is in the text variable, first two columns, and we are asking which element of that matrix is equal to this, okay, the, this bit. We have the single commas, and it's asking which element in text is equal to what's inside the single commas, that's this one, double inverted commas, New York comma, NY, double inverted commas. So if you run just this extra line, now if we now look at, uh, I just need to run it again all the way through. So we run it up to line 41. So if you now look at, at cell 1, you can see that's a logical variable. So it will be 1 if the, the cell entry is equal to that and 0 otherwise. And you can see it has exactly the same dimension as the text just now that it's logical instead of cells. And if you look at it, it will be zero most of the cases. And then it was, oops, it was rows, what was it, 317. So let's just confirm, and you should always do that when you create such new variables. 317, indeed, there's a one here. Okay, so wherever we have New York, there's a one. Now, of course, our dummy variable, we want a a one, so we want our dummy variable, and we call that d and y to be equal to one if origin or destination is New York or destination is New York. Okay. So what we then do is, so that's not exactly what we have here, because that has two columns for every observation, so we want to form one column out of this, and we basically want it to be one if any of the two elements is equal to one in a row. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the row sum, so sum of cell 1, comma 2, comma 2 indicates that the second dimension that's along the rows, we want the sum, and whenever that sum is larger than zero, we want dy and y to be equal to one. So we have again a logical variable here. So whenever the sum in a row is larger than zero, 
we want that variable to be one. And that's what this variable will achieve. Let's do that. So we are D and Y. Okay, so let's see. D, D and Y here. So it's going to be zeros most of the time. And again, in 317 should be the first occasion where we have ones. 317 here and then four observations. That's basically these four observations here, which will be one. So, and then I create another variable, cell to be, perhaps the name isn't the most intuitive, but cell to be basically will be one whenever that sum, so here we have exactly the same calculation, whenever that is small or equal to zero. So that's basically just the inverse of d and y. So what we now want to do is a chow test. So let me just briefly go to our little sketchpad, a chow test. Chow test, and we created a variable d and y that is equal to one if flight involves New York and zero otherwise. Okay, well, well perhaps I'll put a little i in here, the i for observation. Now you remember from, so if this is our generic model, if this is the standard model with our three expenditure variables plus a constant, then we know that is going to be the restricted model and we want an unrestricted model. And that will include a W term. And I think in, uh, actually in the lecture we called it delta, the coefficient. Okay, and this will now be, really it will be a different error term. We can either call it UR for restricted and UU for unrestricted, or I'll just give it a different name. Let's say V for the unrestricted error term. Now this W for that chow test, the way how we define it is that we take the X variables and we just multiply, I put the dot for, for um, it's a MATLAB element wise operation. I'll mention that in a minute times D N Y. Okay, so we want each element in X multiplied with the corresponding value of d and y. So let me just see how that is done in MATLAB. So once we are here, let me run the code until this point. So here in line 45, we will define this w, this w matrix. So you see d and y is 4, 5, 9, 6 and logical and x is going to be going to have the same number of rows 4, 5, 9, 6 but 4 columns so what we want to do is we want to multiply each element with the respective element of d and y so in MATLAB the x is an n by k matrix and the d and y is an n by one. So clearly you know that n by k times n by one is not a valid matrix operation but we have this dot multiplication in MATLAB that means element wise. Element wise but we also don't have the same elements we have n by k times n by n. So really what we want, we want to make out of this guy here, we want to make this into an n by k matrix. And we'll do this by basically attaching d and y next to each other k times. Okay, so we have k times d and y next to each other. 
and that will then be an n by k matrix. And then we can element-wise multiply these two together. Okay, the 1-1 one, one element times the 1-1 one, one element from here, the 2-1 element times the 2-1 element from here. So, this operation of attaching k times the d and y vector next to each other horizontally in MATLAB, this is done by the repmat command, or short for replicate a matrix. Which matrix do we want to replicate? The DNY, not a vector, special case of a matrix. And then the repmat command will ask how often shall we replicate it vertically, so on top of each other? Well, only once. We don't want to, you know, we only want one instance of DNY vertically. But how many horizontal replications do you want? That's going to be the next input here. I will just say, well, however many columns x has. Okay, so size x comma two, number of columns. That means that this all together is the equivalent of this matrix. Okay, and then we do a element by element, then we perform an element by element multiplication dot multiplication. That's going to be our W. If we look at W, of course, you know dNy is zero for most rows. That means the W will have only zero elements for most rows. And see, zero, 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 only once we get to row, ah, actually, there was another row. Uh, 77. Can we just confirm that? In, we must have gone beyond that. 77. Indeed, 77 to 80 is new, has New York data as well. So we therefore see for the, the first few rows where DNY is 1 is 77 to 80. And here we actually just replicate the X matrix. So let's just confirm that. If you look at X, look at them next to each other, W and X, so row 77, they should, and so forth, they should be exactly the same. So 1, 8, 1, 7, yeah, okay, 4, 4, 1, 3, 6, 3, 4, 4, 1, 3, 6, 3. So that's what the W matrix is like. So then what we, the regression we run is we have our normal Y, that's what we defined up here, that's just the fair data. And our explanatory variables is x2, that's our original x plus the w. Okay, so that's exact, that's the x's and the w's. And we run the regression. Now this is going to be our unrestricted model. So I'm going to save the residual sum of squares s as s underscore u. I also call it underscore version 1 because I'll show you how to do that achieve the same thing in a slightly different way. And we get coefficients, that will be eight coefficients, basically four times two, save them in BU. So let's do that for starters. Let's just run this, so just to confirm, we have BU, our coefficients, eight coefficients here, that's all, that's all good, and we have residual sum of squares. Now we want to perform an F-test. Please do remember how the F-test, the, the general form of the F-test is the change in fit or the difference in fit the num divided by the number of restrictions divided by fit of the unrestricted model divided by the decrease of freedom of the unrestricted model. So that's basically what we calculate, what we calculate here. Okay, so look at the numerator first. That's what we have here. The difference in fit. Now the restricted model is of course our original model, which we estimated all the way up here with just y and x. And we had residual sum square here, we saved them as RSS. So that's the restricted sum of square, which is, I just defined a new variable here to have the underscore R in here, but it's no change. RSSR minus the unrestricted sum of square. 
Okay, that's the one which we just calculated, which also includes our W. Divided by the number of restrictions, well, number of restrictions is just the number of elements in W, so therefore size W, 2, so the number of columns in W. Then divided by this bit, the fit of the unrestricted model, divided by the decrease of freedom of the fit. So that's this bit. Okay, the fit of the unrestricted model as SU, version 1, divided by the decrease of freedom. Well, that's the number of observations of the unrestricted model. I saved that here, and underscore U, that's the fourth output of OLSS, minus the number of estimated coefficients in the unrestricted model, number of columns in X2, okay, number of columns in here. So that will be a chow test, and we calculate the decrease of freedom, very much like the chi-squared CDF function. Just now we have an F distribution, and the command is FCDF. We feed in the test statistic, and now we have two degrees of freedom, and we just copy the same, the decrease of freedom we set in the lecture, are just equal to these two numbers, okay, number of restrictions and decrease of freedom of the unrestricted. So first one's the number of restrictions, as this one, the matter, the, the order matters. The first one is the number of restrictions, and the second one, this one here, is exactly the same as the decrease of freedom of the unrestricted model. And we just print the, F, the test statistics. So here we got it, child test 80. Again, we have a extremely small p-value, so there is a structural break in this test. You know, all our tests seem to reject the null hypothesis. This model is really a very simplistic model. You can think about actually looking at the data which are available and try and build a better model. So that was the Chow test. There's just one more thing I want to show you, and I said I mentioned that in the lecture um, in passing more or less. I said estimating the unrestricted model you can achieve that exactly as we did it here in creating that x2 which um, interacts the x with the dummy variable here for New York. I said an alternative way how we could achieve basically exactly the same is by estimating two models. One for all the observations that involve New York and another model that involve all the observations that have not that are not concerned with flights that either leave from New York or go to New York. So we'll do this is the next I do. Okay, I run two regressions, one the New York subsample and the other one the non-New York New York subsample. And then I'm gonna look at these two results and I'll show you how they ex basically deliver exactly the same result as this regression. So let's do the regressions first. Firstly, we need to define new dependent and explanatory variables. We use our y and x, but we only select for the New York subsample, we only select the observations where the d and y variable is equal to 1. Okay, If that is a logical variable to the d and y, and you use it inside the parenthesis to an existing vector, you will select the, that subsample or those elements of y where the d and y is equal to 1. So to illustrate that, y, our original data set, has how many observations? It has y4596 observations. Now how many flights involve New York? Now if you look at the New York, that has the same number of rows, but how many ones are in there? We can just calculate sum of the New York. 296. So 296 observations involve New York. And if we calculate this y and y, and we'll let's go one step further, we go all the way up here, and then we do the same with x with the explanatory variable. We should find that y and y and x and y have 296 observations. So let's go to y and y, and indeed 
two, we have two nine six observations, and X and Y has also two nine six observations and four columns. That's why we have the comma and colon here. We want to select all columns of the rows where D and Y is equal to one. Then we use this new dependent and explanatory variable in our regression. We save the coefficients and the residual sum of squares. That's really all I'm really interested in. If you have this little tilde, you basically say MATLAB, don't worry saving that second and the third and the sixth output. I'm not going to use it. So then we do the same for the non-New York subsample. We use the cell 2b variable. We discussed previously cell 2b was basically exactly the opposite of dny. And then we run a regression with these new two variables, y, n, y, n, and x, n, y, n, not New York. And of course, we will select in here, we will select exactly those observations that weren't selected in here. Okay, so one, every observation will be selected in one of the two subsamples. So now I've estimated these two models. And I said that basically estimating these two submodels is exactly the same as estimating this one model, which includes the W variable as defined previously. Now, if that is the case, we should find that the residual sum squares from this model as S underscore UV1 is exactly the same as the residual sum squared of these two models combined, okay, RSSA and RSSB. So I'll just add these two guys together and I get RSSUV2. And then what I'll actually just do at the end here is I'll just display both of these, okay, and they should be exactly the same. So let's do that. Here we have it compare and then we see the two residual sum squares and you can see that they are exactly the same. So that's one indication why estimating these two models is exactly the same. Let me give you another. Let me go to the, my little scratch pad. I just need to create a new file. So we have the unrestricted model one. That was our model y is x beta plus w delta plus u, then we have the New York model and the non-New York model. And here we had y, let's call it y and y for the New York subsample, and here we had y and y n for the non-New York subsample, and that was x times, or x, the New York sample, times beta and I'll give it a subscript New York plus U New York and then we have exactly the same for the non-New York sample New York not beta New York not plus U New York not. So if the two strategies okay estimating this one model should basically be the same as estimating these two models. Okay, so are these the same? Question mark. The RSS are the same. We just saw that. What about the estimated coefficients? Now remember what we have here in the W. In the W, we had zeros. Let me just figure out the W. The W had sort of had a number of rows, right? And it had either C rows. We had four variables where we had so these were non-New York observations. And whenever we had observations for New York we basically had the original x's, okay, x1, i3 of x1, i3, x3, i, x4, i, 
and so forth. And then when we had non-New York observations, again, there was zero. But these variables, these variables, they were exactly the same as the corresponding variables in X, okay, where we had them. So that means that if we are talking of New York observations, then really the effect, so in New York observations, in this model, the coefficient that's relevant was really beta plus delta, because we had a, P, a beta coefficient for x1 and a delta coefficient for x1 for the New York observations. For the non-New York observations, the only coefficient that is relevant should have been the beta, because otherwise that delta was interacted with the zero, so that means it didn't contribute. So the question is now, is this one the same, the New York coefficient, is that the same as beta New York? Okay, so if the two strategies are the same, then we should expect the sum of these coefficients to be the same as this guy, and we should expect this coefficient here to be the same as this, okay, because for the non in this asterisk strategy, the non-New York observations, this term falls away, and then the only relevant coefficient is the beta. So that should be the same as beta not New York. So let's try and verify this. Our beta New York and beta not New York are BA and BB. Okay, BA is beta New York, BB is beta not New York. Let's look at these two guys for starters. BA and BB. We need everything else. So we can see that these two guys are different. Okay, they have the same signs, but they are different. So what about our beta and delta? Well, they are hidden in this one, BU. We said this is an 8. This has 8 elements. The first four will relate to the axis. That will be our beta. And the second four, that's these guys, and the second four relate to the Ws. In our speak here, that's going to be the deltas. So we said the beta should be equal to beta non-New York. So let's try that first. And beta, that's these four, they should be equal to beta non-New York. That was BB. Let's call up BB. And indeed, the first four elements are exactly the same as the elements in BB. Now, what about the second? So what we've just established is that this guy is correct. What about this one here? Well, let's calculate beta plus delta. That means the first four elements in our unrestricted beta times the last four. Uh, what I'm going to do is I calculate just a new variable called test. And I calculate B underscore U, that's our eight element vector, elements one to four, plus B underscore U elements five to eight. Okay, that was the delta. So I do this, calculate this, and now we look at test. Is it here? Okay, and what we should now find is what we've just calculated is this guy here, and what we should find is that that is equal to beta New York. And beta New York in MATLAB is BA, and test we just calculated, and as if it was a miracle, we get exactly the same coefficients. Okay, so that means that this guy here 
it's the same as well. And I'll leave it with this to establish that really these two strategies are exactly the same.